All right, howdy boyos, and welcome back to Day of Infamy. First of all, a massive thank you for thank New World Interactive Jackson. for sponsoring this video. And um, basically, if you want to play Day of Infamy, they're having a free weekend, which for time zone reasons actually goes on till Monday, a specific time, if you're living in a specific standard time, I believe. So I will link that in the description, their Steam store page, so go check out the game, it's free to play. And basically in this video, uh, hopefully I won't suck too much, I'm going to try and tell you why you should play Day of Infamy. Um, and I think I have some, some, I have some pretty good, I have some pretty good ideas why you should, you know, you should probably play this game. Um, first of all, and this is my, oh, Jesus Christ. This is my personal opinion, and, um, you know, this is my opinion in general in this video, so yours might vary. Do not be offended by opinions. It's hard for people to not be offended by opinions nowadays, I feel like, but anyhow. Um, I'm a big World War II fan. Uh, I cannot tell you that I'm, like, I'm not excited for the new Call of Duty. Uh, you know, it's World War II, but this game, it does tick some World War II boxes. The guns are authentic, uh, the sounds are really damn good, and one thing that I really, really appreciate, and I think that this is something a lot of games don't even look at that much, is, uh, for example, historical authenticity. Now, on the Dunkirk map, which takes place in 1940, you will not see Germans using MG42s, built simply using MG34s. You won't see them use SDGs or uh, G43s, but you'll see them use guns that are actually used. And that's a thing that, like, I know it's super tiny, but it triggers me when I see, like, Dunkirk and there's an MG42. It's like, why? Why? Why do you do this? Why do you have to do this to us? Just give an MG34. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I have to say, I have to say that that makes me very happy about this game. I'm kind of trying to work Mo Americans down or for an that might be. Behind this tiger might not be the best place. I think I mowed one of them down because that guy definitely ducked in cover. MG sounds fucking beautiful. Another reason why you should play Day of Infamy is of course you should be MG, uh, but in all, in, all, in all seriousness. Another good reason I feel like why you should play Day of Infamy is. Oh, oh! Damn it! That! The <laughs> the idea of like, shit, I screwed up, but it's not maybe like RO2 where you're waiting for like, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. It depends on the game mode. In this particular game, I have to wait for reinforcement mode. In some game modes, you can almost respawn instantaneously. I feel like our Day of Infamy punishes you for dying because, you know, obviously you die and you have to respawn. But at the same time, I feel like it doesn't punish you a lot where there's games like Armour if I die and it's like, you know, I have to walk back for, for two and a half minutes or I gotta, you know, if you're playing King of the Hill in Armour, you gotta wait for a helicopter to come back in and it's just fucking frustrating. This game, I have to wait for someone to run back and get some reinforcements, but usually people are very team focused and they'll run back in time, you know, get you, uh, re in this, this particular game mode. It works that someone has to run back to the spawn, basically, and uh, and get you, you know, your wave respawn. Um, I think another good point of data infamy that's overlooked in most games, and I think it's a very valid point to raise nowadays with uh, the new Battlefront, and uh, I, I guess also, uh, I mean, Shadow of Mortar isn't obviously is not really a PV or like a PVP game, um, but especially I guess Stars Battlefront is a good is a good pointer here. With all the loot boxes and unlocks, in this game, the only thing you can unlock are uh, armies or units. So, for example, the Falschimjäger, the 29th Infantry, this all kind of depends on who actually was in the battle, uh, which I think is another really cool thing. Um, but what I'm trying to say here is that oh, there's no, like, weapons that are hidden behind a paywall or weapons that are hidden behind an unlock wall. You get access to every single weapon. And the weapons are unupgradable, which I guess is a good thing if you were to think about it from a loot box perspective. There's not someone that has been playing the game for three years when you are literally starting out in this free weekend because you decided to buy the game. And this guy has like a pink MG42 with like a hollow sight on it and a suppressor and he's mowing you down with a 75% ammo reduction or you know hit restoration re reduction, whatever, almost like heroes and generals would have like has it. Uh, because everyone has access to the same guns, 
um, you know, within that class, obviously some class get access to guns that you don't have. For example, uh, the machine gunner class is the only one that has M access to the MG42. But what I'm saying is if you buy the game right now, you can get an MG42. And someone who has the game for four years gets an MG42. And there's no, like, differences to your gun or his gun. So there is progression. But it's all, it's, it, it's all visual, visual, no, no, visual, visual progression on your character, not on your gun, it's nothing stats-wise, which I think is pretty damn good. Compared it to a game like RO2, where I've been playing the game for not even that long, I mean, probably only like 350 hours, which I guess isn't too, 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 like, it's not too long, right? No, that's actually, that's a lot, but... But that game, I have a way better MG42 than someone who just starts off, who doesn't even have the MG42 because he needs to unlock it first. I think that's that's definitely, like, I, I, I'm not trying to say RO2 is a bad game. I'm just trying to say, like, there's lots of games that I play more casually, and I'm happy that a game like, oh, please don't. I'm gonna team kill you, dude. And I'm happy that a game like Days of me takes a little bit more, holy shit, that was loud, takes a little bit more casually, if, that's, if you're a fan of that, then definitely check out Day of Infinity. I feel like, and this is a positive thing, whether or not they want me to say it, I don't care, I'll say it anyway. Day of Infamy is a more casual version of RO2. Does that make it bad in my opinion? No, because, and this is the main, main reason why I like Day of Infamy, and I liked Insurgency way back when I played that sometimes. Oh, let me, there's a guy right in this Oh, 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 I just got two of them here. Oh god, the MG is amazing. Um, but obviously, if you play RO2, you're kind of committing yourself to a, I don't know, hour. Depends on the map. But if you're playing Mishkova River Assault, you're you're playing an hour of RO2. In this game, I feel like you can jump in, you can have a bad day, and just be like, "Fuck, I'll leave it for 15 minutes," because that'll be a game. Or you can be like, you know what, that was actually fun, and then we do another round. And I, I feel like, honestly, it's not something I've up uploaded on my channel a lot, because I use Day of Infamy as the casual game in between. I play Day of Infamy when I'm like, you know, fuck, I'm done with RO2, I'm so getting annoyed with all the fucking spamming nades and whatever, or the, the, the fact that, like, Banzai charges are OP, and I decide to play this game. If it's only for 10 minutes, I'll feel better. I'll kill a couple of Americans or kill a couple of Germans. Don't take it out of context, you fucking bastards. In the video game, obviously. And that's it. And then, I mean, if you want to use the game that way, that, that's fine. I know there's people who fucking play this game to death. I mean, obviously, uh, that's something different. I am, I cannot say I've played the game to death as much. Oh, that might be bad. I'm fine. I kind of broke my legs there. Legs, lags, lags. I'm fucking Canadian, eh? I broke their, uh, broke their legs. Almost shot that guy. Oh, <laughs> what's up, uh, Mr. Falschmieger? Um, uh, I might, I might, I'm so, I'm so lost. Oh, they're gonna come in here, I'm thinking. All right, I'll set up our. But this is one of those games that you pick up to play around, and if you have a bad day, you're gonna play one round and you're gonna quit, and then you'll try again tomorrow. And if you have a great game or a great day, you're gonna play one or two more. I think that's what Dave Infamy is. Just a quick game. You play it for a round or two. You get some kills. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll, when I die, I can see my kills, I think. But you get some kills, and then when you're done, you're done, and you go ahead and do something else. You play another game that you like, or you play a, a, maybe a more serious game. I'm not saying this game isn't serious or that's bad, but I'm saying, obviously... That's a flame flower. I hope you fucking hit me dead. Oh, come on. Um, actually, I, I don't know why I'm saying serious or casual. This game is actually not casual. That's not true. I'm trying... Okay. From my perspective, this is what I should have said. From my perspective, from my opinion, from my view, before people get mad at me in a comment section, from my personal perspective, this game is more casual than what I'm used to. I play Arma Milsim. Wow, that was very lucky. I play Arma Milsim. I play Squad. I played PR. I play Bird Orchestra 2. This game is a lot more casual than those games. But if you're used to playing games like Battlefield, this game in my opinion, is a lot less casual, or is a lot more less casual than those games. Those games, I, why can I not fucking, okay, let's fucking set up over here. Oh, that guy's dead now. So is it friendly, I think, though. Or oh, we're losing B up there, is that an enemy? 
mine. I don't think so. That's friendly. It depends on what you're used to, I think. That's probably the best answer before people get mad at me. The best answer is it's, it depends on what you're used to. If you're used to games like RO2, this game is more casual. If, you get, if you're used to games like Battlefield or even Call of Duty, this game is a lot less casual. You die in one or two shots. If you're lucky, you can survive that second shot alert. It's like a pistol or something. But an MG or a big rifle will end it. Um, it has this almost more gruesome factor to it than Battlefield. I feel like people explode in blood. You got these flamethrowers running around. People like screaming. I think Mike did a great job on the voice acting. Even though I know he didn't actually do the voice acting for... I think I only did for the Americans if I'm not wrong. There was a guy up here just now. That's an enemy, yeah. Oh, look at that wall! That's fucking messed up! Um, I think... Like I said, Dave, and he ha has to depend, it depends on what you're used to. And for me, this game is more of a casual in-between game. For other people, this game might be the game that they play once a week. It's like, I want to get better at this game. It's, you know, it it's it's too hardcore for me. Um, and I think that just, like I said, depends really on what you're used to. Which for me is a bit less than for other people, maybe. Also, I want to really... <laughs> This is why would I even put the bipod down on this thing? This is way more fun than to use it like a, like a machine gun, like the hip fire machine and mean that it is. I should probably reload this though. I don't know how many bullets one mag has or one belt technically. Also, if you're still watching the video, uh, you're uh, like, you know, I'm not really too sure on what I whether or not I should get Dave into me. Um, I made a couple of videos on it before, and I will link that in the description in my playlist. Oh, I got a. I got an achievement right there. Oh, you're friendly, you're friendly, you're friendly, you're friendly, you're friendly. Where is it? Where is the achievement mean? Oh, okay. I got. I would kill that guy if his team, if team killing was turned on. But yeah, I'll link my. Uh, sorry, I totally got detracked. Detracked? I'm gonna play more tanks. I totally got derailed uh, from my conversation. I guess detract's more fun to say when you're playing war games, right? I totally got derailed from my original conversation saying, Hey, yeah, if you want to check out more Day of Infamy stuff, I'll link my uh, stuff in the description, my playlist for Day of Infamy, which has some more videos, uh, gameplay with a flamethrower, shotguns, rifles, you name it. I actually have to run back to get the... Uh, I'll be the person who runs back this time. Did you even shoot open that wall? Can I, can I, can I, did I make people respawn? Oh, no, the reinforcements are way back there. Oh, I think they just respawned, though. Okay. And in general, I think this game <clears throat> has a feel to it, which is really close to my... Ow. Is really close to my heart. I love to play the Medal of Honor games when I was younger. I'm not talking about the modern Medal of Honors, which... Oh, my level before, that's not bad at all. I must have killed a lot of people in that mowing them down through the uh, through the like like the grass wall or like the, the grass right there. There must have been got like three or four kills. Anyhow, Mill of Honor was one of the games I played a lot as a kid, especially the World War II ones. I kind of dropped off when I did the modern stuff and I didn't really like it as much. Um, but uh, Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, and Airborne were my jam, and I played way too much of those games. And when I look at the maps, I look at the guns, I look at the mechanics. The mechanics are obviously different. They're, this game is a lot more realistic than Medal of Honor, which is probably why I also like it more. Medal of Honor, you know, someone could tank a lot of shots and it got frustrating at points. Is there like a way down over here? Oh my god, I'm getting so lost. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm getting totally lost. Oh, we have to run to Charlie. Or Cesar, as he said it. S Cesar. Please tell me, tell me I can get up here. But it has this feel to me, like an... I, I'm not saying it looks... I think I can get through that at some point, but not now, maybe. Maybe when we have like a TNT or something. He's dead. Oh, I think it's clear now. But it has, it has a feel to me of like an older game. Not graphics-wise, but it just feels like it's a little bit smaller. There's no vehicles, which I personally see as a good thing. I don't like it when every game is like, oh yeah, our 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 game our game has vehicles. They're they're fucking amazing for when you're not playing them because you get fucking destroyed by them every five fuck <laughs> every five seconds. I like that about this game. It's simple, straight to the point. No weapon unlocks. You just play. You unlock your armies, but you know that's just 
it doesn't matter. It's just visual changes. It's not like you're you're not gonna be any different. Hey, I guess your Falschmiger helmet is a tiny bit less big, so maybe they modeled in that the Falschmiger helmet has like a two percent less bigger hitbox than the Wehrmacht helmet. Though I doubt that personally, because that'd be stupid. Why would you waste that much time on something so little? But still, and I like that. Simple, basic, and. Honestly, like I said, I've been having a lot of fun with Dave Infamy. I've streamed with Mike, uh, who was one of the uh, guys who works in Dave Infamy. Really nice guy, by the way. Uh, really, really nice guy. And we always have fun. Whether it's, like, watching each other get... Watching each other... I totally fucking murdered that sentence. Watching each other get blown up by an RPG. Or supporting each other going through a building. That's a fucking Bren Gunner right there. Or a Vickers Gunner, sorry. Fuck! It, it's, it's always been a lot of fun playing with them, and like I said, it's a short game. You can play a round, you can play five rounds. There's a guy right there, dude. Are you fucking blind? Well, I guess he was blind because he died. Mr. Bundy, are you kidding me? There's like Mr. Oh, Mr. Bundy. I thought wait, Mr. Bundy's birthday is soon. That's an interesting name. That's the reasons why you should buy this. Well, that depends. If you're into casual games, when you're from an R2 standpoint, this is your game. If you're being like, hey, I like Battlefield, but maybe I should try a game that's a little bit more on the realism side. A game that allows me to not, well, I guess if you play Battlefield and you're, hmm, I don't know, is Battlefield still a running gun game? I don't know, really, I don't really play the new Battlefield at all. I feel like Battlefield was always kind of like a little bit more realistic than COD, but this game is way more realistic than COD. Battlefield wants to be, probably. It feels better. It feels good mowing down some people. Again, in the video game context. It feels good. I mean, I should... Stop dying! There was people down there, wasn't there? I'm ready. I'm ready. Watch this <laughs> nice slide there, a eh, squad fam. No, but I don't know. In, in short, I would say if you like more casual, quicker games, this is your game. It's quick. It's a little bit more casual than RO2, um, but it's definitely less casual than Battlefield. I've said it like a billion times now, but I, it's just the truth. I don't know if I killed that guy. I kind of think I did. Um, and it's got good good sound design. There's updates for it. That's one thing I think I pro- No, you idiot! I probably should have mentioned that a long time ago, and that's probably- that should have probably been one of my first mentions, actually. My apologies, uh, I should have mentioned that initially. Is that, I think, up games nowadays live or die with- I guess we're going for me. Live or die with consistent updates. I like how when I looked at my score, I was 11-4, now I'm 12-7. I've been doing bad. Games nowadays live with consistent updates, like PUBG getting a new gun, or, you know, uh, games getting a new map. And I feel like Day of Infamy does that good. I have... I think... I'm thinking... They very recently uh, had two new maps, a shooting range, is a kind of a, tutor a tutorial, tutor uh, a sort of tutorial ground where you can, like, shoot your guns and kind of try them all out, and uh, an actual play map. They updated, they actually put that in the game very, very recently. And then, in the last, maybe three months, I think they added about five or six new maps. They added some new armies. At one point, they added four new armies or units for you to unlock. So it's not like this game is dead or it is trying to sell off like an old game that no one plays anymore. And I think that's very important to stress, and I probably should stress it immediately. It's that this game isn't dead. This game... Oh, I should do this once more, right? Try this, I guess. This game isn't dead. Oh, we lost. Oh, you fucked. There were two of them there. Oh, that's an interesting. Uh, that's the fucking texture of the roof, I think. But the fact that they're up, they're coming with new maps. They're coming with like they had Dunkirk. They had oh, what was that other map called uh, with the British Airborne? Like two days after D-Day. I don't remember the map. Uh, it was something like uh, some v something 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 Ville, as like all the French towns are called. But the fact that they're coming with new maps, new units. Uh, their units also come with their own new guns. They added the Australians in the, in, in the Dunkirk update. 
Um, and the Australians had their own uh, own new machine, own own, own new submachine gun, the Owen gun, which actually is a very cool stun, stun gun, but the mag is uh, vertical, not horizontal. Um, so they're, they're adding new stuff, and not just once a year, but very regularly. And I know, that's just, I don't know, I feel like that's worth mentioning in a game nowadays. To me, it's important that the devs aren't trying. Oh, this oh you! Look, oh, there's an Australian. But the Owen gun, actually. Um, you can see the mag on the top. And that's important. A dev who wants their game to succeed keeps updating it. And frankly, I have no clue how much Dave Infamy is on the Steam store right now. Um, but being able to play it for free for, you know, like I said, a couple of days uh, should give you ample time to get, I don't know, let's say, uh, you know, two to three hours in at the very, very, very least. Because um, it is a free game and it's a shooter. I feel like there's enough stuff for you to explore whether it's maps or game modes um, They have like four or five different game modes if not more um, And uh, definitely like units if you can get, unlock them because that's the only downside You'll have to unlock some of the units uh, to obviously play them, but like I said, there's no like real difference between the units um, But yeah, if you I mean like you get to play them and then you know, it's all free to play and you know It's I, I feel like that's why that's why I that's why I like Steam, you know a developer can be like, hey, I want my game to be free to play, and it might push my game some more. Which means, A, the dev gets some money, which is good for everyone, because the dev, dev getting money means that they'll be able to work on the game more. It means that people like you get the uh, ability... No, don't show me! Get the ability to, you know, get an awesome game like Dave Infamy for free for a little bit. And, uh... What the fuck am I talking about? Oh, God. What I'm saying is, they, they get, sorry, that's what I was going, I'm totally got confused with the guy on the stairs. They get to show their game off to, oh, that's a fucking grenade! Or is it a, is it a dead one? Oh, I got oh, I got forced in the corner by the grenade because I saw something rolling, might have even been like a fucking helmet. But they get their game out to more people in the audience. The current audience gets to enjoy more people to play with, which makes the player base bigger. It makes some of the people that, you know, come from afraid to play stuff like, hey, I, this is free to play now, but I like this game so much, I'll pay 10, 15 bucks and play it, you know, as my as my new game it makes everyone better and the dev can use some of that money to work on a new game or work on an existing game and update it and i feel like steam is just fucking amazing i cannot think of a world without steam it's only, i've only been using steam for like, oh, that was a, a press the mouse button for some reason yeah. i can never think about a world without steam i think i've had steam for like six years now i think i bought steam to play i don't even remember what i bought steam to play it's something stupid probably but is this not OH SHIT! I was about to say it's not open yet, and then I see a fucking Australian there with his uh, little Hatsy Matatsy right in front of me. He's like, holy dick balls. This should be good. So we're about to get. We're about to be done with this particular game. We're at 4 on 5. I could stop dying. Wasting, wasting our ticket. Well, I mean, there's no really real tickets, there's just waves. That's a fucking grenade. I'm ready. Fucking. That was amazing. I don't know if I killed anyone. Probably look at the stairs for a second, but I feel like that was worth. I didn't kill anyone with that spray, but it was cool. We're three on three right now. We're getting a bit wrecked here, a eh, fam. There's someone downstairs, I think. No. I think I can move this quick enough. If I have it, there we go. If I just have it like in the middle, facing kind of towards the door. I think I'll be good here, unless a flamethrower runs around the corner and gacks me. I'm really scared. This is also why I like Day of Infamy. I was just playing casually, not really worrying about what's going on. I look at the waves that are left or the tickets, basically, and I'm like, oh shit. I should play more... <coughs> I should play more serious. And... 
don't know. This game allows you. This game doesn't force you to do stupid stuff. Doesn't force. You. Didn't force me to die there, but I did. That was stupid. It doesn't force you to run for objectives. Um, you know, the entire fucking game, it just, if you want to sit there for a couple seconds, or a couple seconds, or if you want to sit there for a little bit and camp that corner, you fucking do you. If you want to be a waste to your team, or maybe help your team, I mean, obviously I was, maybe you helped to my team? I don't know if I was, but if you want to try and help your team, oh shit, we should probably hold C, eh? Oh shit. I love the, I love the crouch, like jump thing which is like the shift C and then you hold C for a second and you like do this amazing cool slide. Is this clean? I wasn't sure that guy was dead. He's dead. 20 seconds. They hit him. I kill him. Woo! That was great. That was fucking... That was a great game. I'm not gonna lie to you. I... I have a hard time doing pretty good in this game, but... That was probably not the worst I've done. I mean, I got... What was it? I didn't even... Uh, I got 18 kills. There. I didn't even do horrible. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the short video. I really should stop using Day of Infamy as just one of those games that I play for in between. And I should really start on making some actual videos, um, you know, on the actual game where I'm just playing and, you know, actually commentating, not just me playing for fun or as like a little in between game. Um, so once again, thank you, big shout out to New World Interactive for sponsoring this video. Of course, I will link my playlist for Day of Infamy and their Steam store in the description. Hopefully you guys go check this out. More players are always welcome. Don't forget to see awesome. Cheers.